It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Today on our podcast, we're going to talk about a few really interesting issues. The first thing we're going to discuss are old accounts. You know, do you have a collection of investments in your portfolio, or do you have an investment strategy that helps you achieve your goals and your dreams? We're going to talk about steps you need to take to make sure that you build a portfolio and not as simply a collection of investments you would happen to have. Later in the podcast, we're going to talk about good intentions and bad advice. It sounds like a movie, right? And we're going to talk about the worst places you can get advice on how to invest, family, friends, CPA, and some of those talking heads in the media. And lastly, we're going to hear from our listeners with two really interesting email questions discussing inherited stock and whether or not you should keep money in cash in an interest rate environment that's negative net of inflation. So let's hop to it. Bob, You know, most of us have what you like to call a collection of investments. And the odds are you probably have never taken the time to really tally up your net worth and examine if your investments are being managed as efficiently as possible. Let's discuss some of these accounts that we may have left on autopilot for way too long. And the first one I think about is those old 401ks. The statement still comes in the mail, yet you just ignore it and you never really address it. You know, Ryan, you hit the nail on the head with that because I just read an article, talked about 401ks, and 90% of you leave the 401k at the company you've left or were fired from. 90%, Ryan. Why is that a problem? The problem is, well, there's a couple of problems with that. First off, your 401k has a very limited menu of options. So there's not that many choices that you can really put your money into. And that really limits how diversified you can get in you know, getting a proper portfolio in place. You know, what you're telling me, Ryan, it's like uh, if you're a vegan and you go to a steakhouse, you're not going to be, you're going to starve, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, exactly right, Bob. Just completely limited in your options. Yeah, because you know when you when you have a 401k menu or a choice of investments, if you're young, you want an aggressive portfolio. You want it to to go up with the stock market. When you're my age, you got to be a little more cautious. So you can't have a portfolio menu where there's not enough choices to help you to achieve your goals depending on your stage in life. Yeah, and that's a great point, Bob, because you probably put that investment plan in place maybe like five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So it's probably not even appropriate for where you are in your life right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, the other thing is, Ry, these things are very expensive. You know, when you have a 401k plan, it's not the least expensive way to invest. Yes. There's a lot of those hidden costs and a lot of the funds that they choose because that's the, that's the beauty of our industry, right? We just hide the fees. You don't see them. <laughs> so, well, it's not like the company's doing anything wrong. It's just that the, the government requires the uh, purveyor of the 401k to have the ability to take loans, the ability to include everyone in the company. And that's all well and good when you work there. But when you don't work there any longer, it's crazy for you to continue to chip in. You, know, you may love the people you worked with, but let's yeah. face it, you're better off with a lower cost option and you can do what's called a rollover, right, right? That's right. Yeah. So you can move the money out of that higher expense plan where you're paying some of the admin costs, you're limiting your options, and you can roll it tax-free into an IRA or an individual retirement account. And then basically you can invest the money exactly how you want to do it. You have complete control. The other thing is, Bob, the beneficiaries, right? You know, you have limits with the kind of beneficiaries you can have on a 401k and that can be a real tax nightmare later. Oh, I just heard the IRS is going to start issuing aspirin uh, with each 401k. <laughs> aspirin. Yeah, because a 401k can be a huge tax headache, right? Um, you know, if you, if you they take my 401k, for example, you know, mom's a beneficiary. But if mom weren't around, you know, the, my adult children, you would be the primary beneficiary. And that's a big problem. But Bob, why is that a big problem if I'm the beneficiary? That sounds like the best plan I've ever heard. Well, it's a big problem for you because you have to distribute that inherited money in a five-year period of time. You don't have your lifetime to distribute it like you would had you inherited from an IRA. And why is that a problem? Well, your, your maximum tax bracket, you know, for those five years, the IRS is going to get more of that money than you are. Yes, the IRS loves the fact that you want to keep the money in the 401k and not an IRA. So it's obviously, from a tax perspective as well, you really want to get that money rolled out, get it consolidated 
into an IRA and out of that old 401k. Bob, another thing we see all the time is you probably have a lot of these old life insurance policies you bought when you were younger, and you're wondering, do I need that death benefit anymore? I've got this big cash value building up. What the heck do I do with this thing? Well, let's face it, Ryan. I always say this. You know, that, that insurance is a necessary evil, but it's the worst way to invest. And that's because of the fees, Bob. Well, it's because insurance companies don't exist to make you wealthy. They exist <laughs> to make them wealthy, right? So yes. everything you do through an insurance company costs more than what you could do on your own. But when you're young and you got to provide protection for your family, you need life insurance. But as time goes by, it becomes a bad deal. Yeah. So the, the numbers you want to run on this, Bob, are you want to see, I have this cash value and you have this death benefit and maybe you don't even need that death benefit anymore. Is it better to take the money out of the actual insurance policy and invest it on your own, sometimes that can be a better deal, Bob. Oh, always right, because you know insurance companies are always evolving. I mean, I had a buddy of mine that I hang on a beach with every weekend down at Ocean City, and he's always telling me about these new, improved insurance products that he's, he's out there pitching. And I said, yeah, well, do you call your old clients to tell them that this is a better deal? He said, heck no, you're gonna cut my commission. <laughs> so the, the insurance broker is not working in your benefit, Bob, is that what you're trying to say here? Now, the point of fact is, right, things do get better. You have to check on these things. And, you know, anything you have in life insurance, you can do cheaper and better the day after you make that investment. So it's a necessary thing to do, but it's also necessary to get a checkup once in a while. Yes, exactly. And what you need to do there is you can get an in-force illustration. In fact, our advisors can get on the phone with you, call directly to the insurance company, not the broker, so you can actually see how that insurance policy is going to work over time, make a better decision about it. The last thing, Bob, is that we're all guilty of right now is we have a lot of money just sitting there in these old savings accounts, earning very, very little interest right now, and that just doesn't get you to your retirement goals. Wait a minute, Rob. You're telling me $8 trillion sitting in cash is a lot of money? Yeah, Bob. $8 trillion is the number that Americans have right now in savings accounts earning literally less than 1%, which is just insane. That's so much money earning so little. Who's going to be able to retire with that kind of zero return on your money, basically. I know. You can't compound a zero return. And, and you may be sitting there thinking, oh, well, I don't have any cash in my accounts. But you know what we find out? When we look at all the various accounts you have and you add it up, you'd be shocked to find out how much money sitting in cash, not working for you, not earning anything, something you could be putting to work and compounding, especially in this big booming bull market. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review where we look at the whole picture. All you need to do is print those statements off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. Bob and I are going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where you're going to get a bird's eye view of everything, your whole financial life. And we're going to look at all the major components. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in those 401ks, those mutual funds, insurance products, annuities. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio, show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit really hard when the market sold off back in December? Is your portfolio protected? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio for the rest of your life. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. How are you going to replace that income? If you're retired now, what is your income gap? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio so you have an income stream for life that you cannot live. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you using strategies now we've been working on literally for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. 6692 and tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit our website bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation call or text 844-752-6692 that's 844-752-6692 or simply click the get started button on bebullish.com If your advisor reminds you of Gordon Gecko, fisherman, 
always sees another fisherman from afar. It might be time for a fresh perspective. So, Bob, let's talk about some of the people who may have good intentions, but often give very bad financial advice. And first place I think about it is a lot of times is family, not in our family, of course, because we only give great <laughs> financial advice. But most people's families, you have people that can give you bad advice. Well, families are dangerous, Rod, because they generally tell you the best place to lend money is to them. <laughs> yeah, that's probably more accurate, actually. <laughs> but what happens? I mean, when somebody works for a company, you assume they're an in-house expert just because they might be working on the loading dock or they're working in uh, you know accounting, but uh, they truly don't understand the, the, the totality of the company. They just have a fierce loyalty to it. Now, not bad like your cousin who worked for Procter & Gamble, but you know, your dad worked for Merrill Lynch. That didn't turn out so good. That's right. I mean, a lot of times you can you may own your company stock and think, hey, that's the best thing ever. I follow this stock. You should put your money there as well. And Merrill Lynch is a great example, Bob. That stock basically went to zero in the matter of six months. And if you had your net worth tied up there, that was a very bad thing. Yeah. So I would say that family is a good place to avoid getting financial advice or for lending money. Well, yeah, probably more importantly, don't lend money to family. Uh, the other thing is friends, and, and this happens all the time, right? You're on the golf course, someone's got a hot stock tip. Uh, sometimes, you know, your friend at work talks about the investment strategy they're using. This sometimes can be the most dangerous place to get advice. It is really dangerous, right? Because you know, when I over the years, over the last forty years, whenever I had a client that had to write off a penny stock that was worthless, right? You can't even sell it. Um, right. You have to give an explanation for where the idea came from. And almost universally, it came from a friend on a golf course. It was a stock tip on a golf course. <laughs> have you ever made any money from a friend who gave you a, a tip on a stock? Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Or horses either. <laughs> or horses, right. Yeah, that's yeah. probably basically the same thing because it's almost like the worst thing about people that give stock tips is it's like people go to the casino, right? They only tell you about when they win. They never tell you how they did something. You know, They never tell you how they lost money. Right. And the other thing is people feel very confident once something's going up a lot. So yeah, they may have made money on a specific idea, but by the time they tell you about it, it's ripe for a crash. That's right. That's right. It's usually right when uh, the, you know, the price is at the highest and you've already missed the boat on it. The other thing too, Bob, is we talk about this a lot, is like, let's, be, let's be real here. Financial planning is a very customized thing. So whenever you're making a decision about your finances, it's really a concerted effort with everything going on in your life, everything from your taxes to you know, where is your money located. Is a lot of it in retirement accounts. And we know this client by client, everyone's situation is so different that the advice can be very, very different. That's another reason why it's so dangerous that someone blanketed is giving you advice. And another place too are CPAs, Bob. Not, they're not necessarily the best place to get advice on your finances. You know, Rye, I had a, a client call me the other day, tell me a CPA is getting stock tips from some website and tell me all about this great semiconductor stock he owned called NVIDIA. And so I pulled up the chart and the stock had gone from 292 down to 160 in the last six months. It's a 50% Ouch. decline. And I called the client up and he said, you know, he forgot to tell me that part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Forgot to tell you that part. Well, and we know too, I mean, actually our CPA is actually our client and he is probably, I've never gotten better tax advice than, than our accountant, Bob. He's amazing. But man, he is terrible when it comes to investment advice. It's just a different skill set altogether. So I think it's, it, you got to be really careful there. And a lot of times we see accountants will put a shingle out there as a financial advisor too. And it's like two completely different disciplines. You know, all you have to do is remember, think about it to yourself. Who are you? Are you an investor or are you a speculator? So if you're a speculator, it's no different than going to the casino, no different than playing the lottery. Single stock speculation is gambling and it ends in tears. You know, how many people actually win at the casino and the people who are giving you these tips, do they ever tell you they ever lose? Never. And Bob, the worst culprits are... Uh financial experts in the media, and I know I'm guilty of this because I do TV on a weekly basis, but I mean, come on, some of the advice out there is just, it's bad for your financial health. That's why we even do our segment, Financial Propaganda, every week. You know, right, kind of like Major League Baseball, right? If you're a young hitter or, you, uh, or you're an aging hitter, right, you're always swinging for the fences, trying to hit a home run because that maybe it might extend your career, right? These people get on national TV and they're not trying to give you sound advice. They're trying to hit a home run, so maybe you'll believe them, or maybe they'll become famous or infamous. 
That's right. And you got to remember, it's entertainment. It's not great advice. Uh, at the end of the day, they're trying to sell you whatever the commercials are, gold coins or whatever happens to be the commercial when you're watching the financial channels. So it's a really dangerous place to be getting advice on your investments and how you should be allocating your money for the rest of your life. Hey, Ryan, you ever notice the worst thing for a baseball player is on their swinging for the fences every time up their bat? You know what normally happens? They strike out, Bob. That's right. And if you're listening to financial experts in the media, I guarantee you, you're going to strike out a lot in your portfolio. Yeah. So, Ry, you know, I mean, this is what we're talking about. When you talk to family or friends or CPA or listen to people on TV, they're talking about single stock speculation, individual ideas. But really, that's not what financial planning is about. That's not what investing is about. That's not what achieving your goals is about, right? What's it all about? At the end of the day, Bob, the, the simple thing is you want to build a portfolio that's not going to blow up on you, that you can live off of for the rest of your life, and you can basically put it so that you're at the sleep point every night. I mean, it's really that simple when you get down to it. Yeah. So basically, it's not about you know picking winners. It's about reducing your overall volatility. It's about overcoming inflation. It's about reducing taxes, having a cost-efficient portfolio. And it's about, as you say, being able to sleep at night knowing you're going to achieve your dreams. The things we talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That's why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you. So we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. We're going to give you a full holistic review of your entire financial situation. We're going to look at everything. All you need to do is gather all your statements, stick them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag, make an appointment. We're going to sit down with you and review everything and help you become financially organized in your complete financial life so that you can look at your finances in real time not only at your net worth, but also at your goals and see how you're progressing towards those goals. We're actually going to give you a report card on a daily basis. We're going to take your portfolio and break it down to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Just think, are you truly diversified right now? Are you overcharging yourself in your own portfolio? Do you have the income you need to sustain in retirement? Or if you're in retirement, do you have the income that will allow you to stay retired. We're going to help you with these critical issues and make sure that your portfolio will provide all those things inclusively. But most importantly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, which will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years? That's right. For four decades. We've been helping families just like yours to get from your financial point A to your goals, to your dreams, to your point B with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692 or click the get started button on bbullish.com. It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. If you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some great questions. And today, we're going old school. Our original producer is with us this morning. Walter Storholtz. Walter, thanks for being with us, man, and producing the show this morning. And you're going to help us out with the email questions today. It's great to have you, man. Back to the old school. I love it. After like an eight year hiatus back in the saddle <laughs> to uh, it's been too long. Hit the hit the buttons and throw you guys some questions here. So uh, we've <laughs> we've got a couple of good ones actually this week. Uh, first one comes to us from Elise. I've always liked the name Elise. The best intern I ever had. Her name was Elise. 
stalwart employee in Stamford, Connecticut. Elise says, Bob, I inherited a large account with stock in several blue chip companies from my dad. This is a blessing because I haven't done a great job of saving for my own retirement. But to me, this account represents dad's lifetime of hard work and savings. So I don't really want to make any changes to it. Is it okay to just leave it alone? Well, you know what? The answer for Elise is maybe, but not likely. You know, when you look at a portfolio of stocks, first of all, if dad had accumulated these over his lifetime, the good news is he has a stepped up basis. In other words, the cost basis where dad would have paid a huge capital gain uh, is no longer there. So she's starting fresh. But the bad news is most stocks don't go up, believe it or not. You know, Rye, over the last 100 years, 40% of the market only returned what a treasury bill returned. Wow. So that means that you have to have the most amazing stock picking ability to pick those couple stocks that are going to outperform, which, man, Bob, I wish I had that skill set, but I'm just not that good. And even if these companies, these stocks had great performance, you know, past performance is 100% predictive of past performance. It says nothing about the future. There's no predictive power in how a stock performed in the past. Best example I can give you, Rye, is GE. Hottest stock yes. it was in the 80s and the 90s. Worst performing stock in the entire world over the last 10 years. And I mean, how many of us had that stock, didn't want to diversify because it was just like the great rule of thumb is you never sell GE. You always hear that, right? That was... Or AT&T was another one that you never wanted to sell. And AT&T has actually done well, but who knows? Is it going to be a GE or is it going to be an AT&T? If I really knew that answer, Bob, I'd be on my yacht. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's so true, right? If you look at any blue chip stock, if you just compare it to what the underlying index did, whether it's the large company growth index or the S&P 500 or large company value index, the performance of the index is probably the same or most likely better than any individual stock. So you get less risk, right? You get lower probability of losing money like you would in GE. And in the case of GE, if instead of holding it for the last 10 years, you just put that into the S&P 500, you'd be up 350% versus down almost 80%. So you could have made more money. You could have taken less risk, Bob, I and mean, presumably probably had more dividends as well. I call that an offer you can't refuse. No, I think that's, uh, that's so true, Ryan. And, you know, I'm, I'm so happy for Elise, and she didn't do a good job of saving that she did inherit some money. And by the way, I hope you're doing a good job of saving money because I don't really uh, plan on leaving anything. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Oh, man, that's too funny. Uh, getting into the family politics here on No Pain, No Gain today. <laughs> it's just, it's getting, becoming an edgy show. Um, <laughs> I, I, edgy. I come back and all you know what breaks loose. It's pretty wild. Uh, we've got another great question here from Alex in Short Hill, New Jersey. Alex says, Ryan, I'm getting increasingly uncomfortable with downside risk in the market. I'd like to find some areas where we can go to cash. What do you think? Woo. Okay. This is a question that's coming up a lot. And what you have to think about right now specifically is it's, you never want to go to cash per se. And the problem with cash is, Bob and I like to say cash is trash. You know, Bob, we're, we're not big fans of earning nothing on your money. And last time I looked, cash earns nothing. Well, it's not just earning nothing, right? You're losing to inflation. And that's a, that's a negative return. That's right. And I think right now it's more dangerous than ever because rates have come down. In fact, some of the bigger banks like Goldman Sachs came out and said they're already lowering the interest rate on their money market fund. So if you're getting 2.5%, now you're getting 2% and you're paying taxes on that. It was already a lousy deal. Now it's even more of a lousy deal. And here's the great irony right now, Bob, is actually stocks, if you have money in stocks, have been increasing the amount of money they're paying you right now as bond and cash yields have been going down. So it seems counterintuitive to sell something where the, in, the income's going up to put into where the income's going down. Yeah, and that being said, Ry, you, you should always have an emergency fund. You should have a portfolio of bonds that come due you know, to hedge against the volatility of the stock market. But when you look at the stock market, one of the reasons why it does go up over time is because dividends are increased. And also, when you have low interest rates, when you have low inflation, the price-earnings ratio, which pushes the prices of stocks up, uh, is increasing. So, you know, all in all, just make sure you have your piece of the prize, right? You want to be at a diversified portfolio, make sure you have that allocation in stocks. Yeah. And I think also right now, counter, it might sound counterintuitive, but you actually have the opposite problem. This person, Alex, seems to be invested, 
but most of you probably have too much money sitting in cash. So the question is, do I get more money in cash? Is you got to start thinking about how do I deploy that cash over a portfolio where it's going to generate income that I can't outlive? And you got to make those decisions now. You can't wait. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.